In this video, we're gonna go over the canvas, this area right here. And even if you've been using Flutterflow for a bit, you might learn some kind of hidden things. So starting from left to right, if you wanna collapse this panel here to have more room, that's what this little icon does. You can zoom in and out, that's easy. Right over here is a feature that you're gonna often use. And this will just take this UI builder and pop it out into a floating pane. Now, this is really helpful when you wanna build quickly. So you can come over here and just start dragging items in really quickly because your cursor is so close to your page that it allows you to move very quickly. Okay, so let's close this out. Next, you have a switch here to switch from dark to light mode so you can check your designs as you're working. Then you've got your device display. Now, this is especially helpful to see with the corners of your design as well as these top bump outs that some phones have. You're just making sure that no important content is being cut off. Okay, next up, you've got resizable handlebars, so you can drag it bigger and smaller, or both at the same time and at the bottom here. And finally, you've got this resize snapping. Now, what this does is it creates a sort of grid for you with whatever dimensions you specify here. So if I were to say 100 by 100, then if I have an element over here and I wanna resize it, it's only gonna snap to dimensions that correspond to that. So if you see right here between 200 and 300, I'm not getting anything and it's just gonna snap into whichever the closest dimension is. Here I snap to 300. And you can see that down in the properties panel. The resize snapping is helpful when you're trying to have a consistent grid. Not in terms of the grid of the overall layout, but the relative sizes of different items. Now that's all the buttons you'll see up here by default, but you'll see other buttons pop up under certain circumstances. The first one is multi-language. So if you come over to your settings here and you go to languages up here, let's set our primary language as English and our secondary language as Hindi and just fill them out right here. That's great. And then when you come back, you're gonna see this icon right here. And so if we open it up right now and we set it to English, we can see this type. Then if we set it to Hindi, it's gonna go away. And that's because we don't have anything translated into Hindi right now. So if we go to our text here and we come to this little icon, we can have Google translate it into Hindi right now. And now we're gonna see it. So you can switch between your languages. The other icon that you're gonna see is an icon to see when you have an overflow error. And to show you this, let me just grab a template page right here. And we'll grab this one right here. And you can see we've got this new icon right here, which is show overflows. And when I click it, you can see that we've got some overflow errors right here. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing because in this design, I want this background display to overflow its parent. So we get this nice cutoff effect, like we've got these images behind it. So there's no problem here, but this is a helpful debugging check. So you don't actually have to test your app to see your overflows. You can see them right here in the canvas. Okay, so that's all of the icons in that top bar right here. We also have this app bar option, which we reviewed in our app bar video, but if you wanna add one of your app bars, you can add it here. And we've got our nav bar down here that you can turn on. And once again, we went over that in the nav bar video. Okay, so that's all for buttons. The last set of things that you're gonna be doing on your canvas will be in your actual page here. And that is, you can click and drag items to reorder them and you're gonna be given some visual feedback about where they're going. So right now I'm gonna drag this above this item and you're gonna see the little line there that tells me where I'm gonna be dropping it. Also, some widgets will have control handles. So down here on this button, we've got a vertical control handle and that's because our height is to a pixel dimension. Our width doesn't have any handles because it's set to infinite. But if we get rid of that, then you're gonna see these control handles, which of course work just like normal control handles. And it snapped to three 300 because of course we've got our resize snapping enabled. And the last thing that you're gonna do on your canvas is you're gonna right click on things. And when you right click, you've got a bunch of different options here. You can cut the widget, you can copy and paste, you can undo and redo, delete it, and all of these options down here. Now, I find that the most common shortcuts I use and that you'll wanna memorize are Command D for duplicate. And I typically use this more often than copy and pasting. 
Because when you copy and paste, Flutterflow will try to paste it into what element you have selected, whereas duplicate will duplicate it inside the parent. So right here in my column, I've got two text widgets, and maybe I want another one down here. If I try to copy and paste it, let's say this text right here, copy and paste, it says it can't copy the widget into itself because a text widget can't have any children. Now, to do that, I would have to come over to my column, select it, and paste it in right there. And it's under there, but we've got a height constraint. You can see it over here. Let's undo that. Instead, I can just select that and Command D, and it'll duplicate it within its parent. So that's Command D duplicate. The next most often one I use is wrap. So I've got this page view right here, but maybe I want to add in, and the normal way you do this is to wrap it in a container. Now, if I wanted to do this without wrap, I would have to come into our column, come in here, add a container, and then drag my page view in there. But if you do Command B, you can just wrap it like that. Finally, the other shortcut I use, but there's not a keyboard shortcut as of this video, is replace. So maybe I want to replace this staggered view with a grid view, or maybe I just want to test out the design. Well, an easy way to do that is just to right click on this staggered view and say replace widget and replace it with a grid view, something that would take a few minutes if I had to do it manually. And of course, just like anywhere in Flutterflow, if you don't like that, you can just Command Z to go back. Now, one last thing in this right click menu is that you can select anywhere in the hierarchy of your widgets here. So if I'm on my text widget right here and right click, you can see that I'm walking up the nested elements in the parent. So this is the closest, the most immediate parent, and so on and so forth as you move down all the way to your root widget. And that can be very helpful to be able to find the right parent to target. And that's the canvas in Flutterflow.